Hi guys, Miss Hargrave here with the Interpreting Visual Information Quiz. This story is called Rescuing and Racing with Drones by Alice Carey. I think you'll find this story interesting. I did as I read it the first time. As our lights flash and propellers whirl, drones are busy. They do all sorts of jobs. Hurricane hunting drones fly right into deadly storms to gather important data. A television crew uses drones to film motorcycles racing around a track. Meanwhile, drones help a group of scientists to collect whale snot. Why? They want to find germs that are making whales sick. Drones have been around for more than 20 years. They are more popular than ever. And as drones fly faster and farther, people have found more ways to use them, including rescuing and racing. Jobs that use drones. Photographers, it looks like 500. Real estate agents are over 300. Farmers, a little less than 200. Construction workers, a little over 100. And film and television crews, just under 100. This graph shows the number of drones used by people in different jobs. Here's our first question. The passage tells you about drones' jobs. What other information does the graph give? That drones film hurricanes to collect important information. Well, there's nothing about hurricanes on this graph. Drones are most often used for photography. Well, photographers are the highest one. Drones are used more in jobs now in the past. Now that was earlier in the passage, but not in our graph here. Or drones have taken the place of many human jobs. That's not included on our graph either. So the best answer is they're most often used for photography. Click done, and then the green arrow. Drones to the rescue. One drone rescue took place in Wisconsin. An 82-year-old man was missing from his home. Rescuers searched for three days using helicopters, trained dogs, and volunteers, but they had no success. Then one rescue volunteer flew his drone over a big field. It would have taken hours to search that area from the ground. In just 20 minutes, the drone's camera spotted the missing man. The police were told and they returned the man safely to his family. After any disaster happens, drones can be sent out to check the damage to buildings, roads, and bridges. Drones can show rescuers exactly where people need help. They can even deliver first aid supplies to anyone trapped in a dangerous spot. So here's a drone flying over a disaster area. Why was the drone able to find a missing man when helicopters and dogs could not? Is it because it could fly for hours without stopping? It could land in a dangerous spot, it could deliver first aid equipment, or it could search a large area quickly. Now, several of these things are true about drones, but how could it find this man when helicopters and dogs couldn't? So I'm gonna go back and reread here. I said, it flew it over a big field, so a large area, right? This area is very big, and it would have taken hours for the humans to go through that area. So in this case, it could search a large area quickly. Fill in the blanks into how drones can help in a disaster. When a disaster happens, drones can look at damaged buildings, lift up damaged buildings, or leave behind. Well, they can't lift anything and they can't leave them behind. I mean, I guess when they leave um, that area, but they're looking at those damaged buildings, right? To make sure what's going on there, if there's any people in there that need to be rescued. And they can also carry dogs, police, or supplies to people who are hurt. But they could bring them supplies, right? and be able to help them out that way. You'll click the arrow or it'll go to the next page on its own there. Oh, there we go, green arrow. It's easier to land a drone in a disaster area than a large vehicle like a helicopter. After Hurricane Harvey hit Houston, Texas in 2017, one rescue team flew 119 drone missions to help in the disaster area. In the mountains of Austria, the Red Cross uses a special drone rescue vehicle. The drone is stored inside a compartment in the roof. When rescue workers need the drone, the roof opens up so the drone can take off and land. Here's an emergency rescue using a drone here. You can see it's a truck. They have the remote control transmitter and a landing pad here for the drone in the middle, uh, in the back of a regular truck. A truck can also serve as a drone launch in an emergency. All right, let's fill in our chart here for diagram. Which sentence about drone rescue vehicles uses information from the diagram and the passage? So several of these are gonna be using the diagram or the passage, we want the one that combines them. So in our diagram, we have drones landing in trucks, as well as in the passage, it said that they 
um, lifts off from the roof in that Red Cross building. So remote controls are used to fly drones to and from rescue vehicles. While that's true, that doesn't combine information from both. Rescue drones can take off and land in trucks, yes, and special vehicles, yes, like a special rescue vehicle here. Trucks have leaning pads in the back, yes, but that's just the diagram. The Red Cross uses drones in the mountains of Austria, yes, but that's just the passage. So the one that combines them both is that they land on trucks and special vehicles. Drone racing. Lots of people fly drones just for fun too. Some of them belong to drone racing leagues. They play against each other on obstacle courses that are set up in fields, warehouses, and even football stadiums. Racers wear goggles or large glasses that show them exactly the same thing as what the drone camera sees. And here you see in our picture, in our caption, our text feature says, a drone racer wears goggles and uses a remote controlled transmitter to command his drone. Why do drone racers use special goggles? I'm gonna look back here where it says racers wear goggles or large glasses that show them exactly the same thing as a drone camera sees. To see drones that are far away. Nope, doesn't match. To see what the drone camera sees. Yes. I'm gonna read my other two choices though and see if there's a better one. Protect their eyes from sweat. Nope, never mentioned that. To have a wider view of large spaces. Nope, didn't mention that either. To see what the drone camera sees. Click your arrow. When the drone is 100 feet in the air, it's almost like you're up there too, says one 12 year old who races with his father. His father adds, when we are racing, our heart rate goes up and we get kind of sweaty and nervous and we shake. It's similar to racing a go-kart or riding a motorcycle. Flying a drone in a race can be very difficult. So racers need to have a lot of skill. They also need to be patient. Racers suggest that beginners learn to fly a very small drone in a large open space like a park or field before trying anything more difficult. And here you have an example of a drone obstacle course. So starting going through some flags, so over some clouds, through some barriers there. This makes perfect, of course. Whether you're racing, rescuing, or even just learning, flying a drone lets you feel like a bird in the air. And here's our last question. How does the diagram titled drone obstacle course help you better understand drone racing? So this diagram here. Does it show you how flying a drone can make racers feel? I wouldn't know how they feel just by looking at this diagram. Does it show you how they learn to control their drones? Does it show how much time it takes? There's no time on here. Or does it show us the type of things that they fly through, like flags, over clouds? Yes, that would be the best one, right? It shows us different things that they fly to. This doesn't teach us about the controls, their feelings, or the time it takes. Click done. And then that's your last question. If you need anything else, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Have a good day, guys.